Hi there, I'm super happy you could join me today, because today we're gonna take a look at some of the new, at least new for me, FPV hardware I got my hands on during the last month. We're gonna have some radios, we're gonna have some pretty interesting Express LRS compatible receivers, a drone and something else. Let's begin with the radio. This is the WFLY ET16S and from the outside it looks like any other OpenTX radio. We have two gimbals, we have the screen, we have switches. By the way, those are nice switches. I really do like those switches. The detent is nice and there is not too much of the resistance on the movement so they feel super great. The gimbals does not feel as great as the switches. However, the gimbals are kind of nice. Nothing is wrong. Super nice finish on the casing. Uh, nothing is moving you feel this is a nice solid object and from the outside it really has a nice appearance to it however however this is not any other open tx radio because this is not an open tx radio this is not the open tx this is something very specific to this radio with different navigation however the function seems to be slightly similar to what open tx offer and this is not all what the radio offers because the built-in radio radio chipset is nothing super fancy it's just the 2.4 gigahertz standard modulation nothing long range comes with the small receiver with the diversity also comes with the slightly bigger receiver with the diversity and the eight yeah eight uh, outputs for your servo so you can use it on your drone on your airplane whatever but it also comes with this this is external RF module equipped with the, exactly the same type of the hardware than the Express LRS 2.4 or the Tracer or the Ghost or whatever, the new modern long range, uh, long range systems, because this has inside the LoRa modulation enabled SX1280 trans RF module and it also comes with the small receivers with those fancy dipole antennas that are able to communicate with that. So far what I know this is their own internal protocol this is not Express LRS and you have the option of the short range flying and the long range flying with this thing. This is not the last appearance of this radio and this setup on this bench because we will do a detailed teardown of the radio and also detailed teardown down and analysis of the transmitter because I'm interested to see what they did over there. Next, I have a second generation of the MAT LED LED controller. What is it? It's the controller. It's the board that you put somewhere in your model, most probably airplane, connect a lot of LED strips with the standard programmable LEDs to this thing, connect the RC controller with just three wires, configure everything with your smartphone because this thing has the wi-fi you connect with your smartphone through the wi-fi and with the web interface you configure how the leds should be behaving and then you switch between the modes using your radio just by flipping the switch so we will take definitely a longer look at this thing in one of the future videos right now i'm only suggesting that something like that exists this is a very independent project and uh, something like more than a year ago I even had the first generation of the hardware if we compare so you see the hardware got bigger but also most probably the hardware got maybe slightly more advanced we will see with the detailed video about the new generation of the mud led those little two boards you will just love because what I have over here are two Express LRS compatible receivers, one with the small ceramic antenna over here and one with the di diversity. Yes, this receiver has a diversity. We finally have the Express LRS compatible receivers with the diversity, not full antenna diversity, but still made by, guess who made those boards. And of course, the boards were made by Matek. That means that the Matek is joining the Express LRS hype wagon. And sooner or later, we might even see the transmitter from Matek. I would really like to see that. There will be separate video about uh, those receivers because I would like to have a detailed look under the microscope, how they are built and how they compare to the cheaper options because they are not cheap 
cheap receivers. However, when you just take a look at the quality of the board, it's just top-notch quality that usually Matek delivers uh, because they are just deliver usually the very good quality. So we will take a look a separate in the separate video of how they are built because especially this one is interesting thanks to built-in diversity. That's, however, not all I got from Matek, because on top of those receivers, Matek is starting to make also Express LRS and Crossfire compatible accessories. This, for example, is the Crossfire to PWM converter. You connect any Crossfire CRSF, actually, compatible receiver over here, and you get six PWM outputs because this thing just decodes the Crossfire protocol and is a PWM driver. So you can connect servos directly, almost directly to the CRSF compatible receiver, Crossfire, Tracer or Express LRS and fly without any flight controller. This is simple. This is nice. Something that, for example, SBUS to PWM converter, we had this for years. Now Matek joins the race with the Crossfire to PWM. But if you think this is interesting and this is cool, you have not seen this thing. Because this thing is another beefed up version of the smaller hardware. One more time, it's the Crossfire to PWM converter. Because you connect Crossfire over here, you have... This time, how many? Oh, this is much more because you have 10 PWM outputs. But on top of that, this thing also allows you to connect the, guess what? External GPS and current sensor to get the voltage through going through the current sensor and the current, of course, going through the current sensor. And also the GPS coordinates and transfer them down to your radio as standard Crossfire telemetry. So not only you can convert Crossfire protocol to PWM, but also get some telemetry from the board. And last but not least, I'm joining the ultralight long range powered with the single Lithium 18650 gang with this thing I have here on my bench. This is the Darwin 18650, yeah, kinda obvious drone. I have the intention to put to some of the endurance and see how fast and how stable in the air those things will be and if indeed they are a good option or well really something that was popular some time ago and now it's really time to forget. My plan is to put one of those Matex Express LRS receivers, they should fit over here just fine. And as soon as the weather allows, because right now still the weather over here is kinda nasty, put this thing into some distance and see if this will work or not really so much. And when I say that this is really the ultralight long range, I'm not kidding because the whole drone without any LiPo weighs only 54 grams. If you smack a single battery on top of that, you go to, well, let's say slightly below 100 grams. And then when you add a single Express LRS receivers from Matek, you are only slightly above 100 grams. With something like that, you can fly almost everywhere without having to register, pass the exam or anything like that. Because this is way, 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 way below 250. The only interesting question is how stable in the air this thing is. Because if I'm correct, then I'm afraid this will fly pretty nicely only in the super calm weather without absolutely no wind. But we will know later in the separate video on this topic. I'm Paweł Spychalski. Thank you very much for watching and happy flying.